In this video, we're going to look at eukaryotic uh, organelles. So in eukaryotic cells, these are large, complex cells that have membrane-bound organelles. And you can think of organelles as little compartments or little organs with very specialized reactions that contribute to the overall functioning of the cell as well as the organism the cell is a part of. So our first organelle we're going to talk about is the nucleus. So the nucleus is found within the cell and this is where the DNA is stored. So within the nucleus you will find chromosomes as well as the location for where um, you have transcription occur. So we haven't learned transcription yet, but transcription is where a messenger RNA is made, and then that will be used by a ribosome to make proteins. So the nucleus contains the eukaryotic cell's DNA in the form of chromosomes, and the nucleus is surrounded in what we call a nuclear envelope. That nuclear envelope is made of a lipid bilayer, the same material as the cell membrane. So when we say membrane-bound organelles, that's what we mean. It's the same phospholipid bilayer that is surrounding all cells. Okay, so our next organelle to look at are ribosomes. Now ribosomes are found in all cells. They are found in, so if we look here at this picture, you can see the ribosomes are these little tiny red dots located within the cytoplasm, as well as lo being located on the rough ER. So ribosomes, their jobs are to make proteins. These are the organelles that will attach an amino acid to another amino acid in a long chain called a polypeptide. So when we get to our unit on DNA and RNA, we'll see how messenger RNA is the code or is the directions on how for like how the ribosome builds that amino acid chain or that polypeptide. So the ribosome in this little animation here uh, is the brown thing that is like reading the messenger RNA. So that is a whole nother unit in biology, but if you're watching this video as a review at the end of the year, then this will make sense. Okay, so ribosomes, so let's go back real fast and summarize again. Their job is to make proteins. They are found in the cytoplasm as well as attached to the rough ER. Now, ribosomes are not membrane-bound organelles, but they are an organelle that make ribosomes. You also find them in prokaryotes or bacteria. Okay, so then we have the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum, and there are two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum. We have the smooth ER and the, and the rough ER. And the smooth ER's job is to synthesize or make lipids. So when you talk about phospholipids or uh, like cholesterol or steroid hormones, those are being made in the smooth ER. Then uh, the smooth ER also contains enzymes to help detoxify our bodies. So the smooth ER is a pretty important organ. They're all important organelles. Um, and then we have our rough ER. And the rough ER, oh, let me move my little camera. So the rough ER, uh, basically, because the rough ER uh, has ribosomes attached to it, you can kind of like say that the rough ER is also an, a site or location where ribosomes are made. Uh, the rough ER gets its name, rough ER, because when you look at it under, when they first looked at it underneath the microscope, it looked rough. So it turns out years later, they discovered that the, the bumps on the rough ER were actually ribosomes making proteins. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our next organelle. So um, here we have, I think the Golgi is next. So the Golgi apparatus is often compared, there it is, often compared to a post office or something. So the Golgi is where proteins are packaged, they're modified or sorted, and they get ready to be sent out of the cell. For example, insulin is a protein-based hormone. So when the cell uh, makes insulin, so when a ribosome makes the protein insulin, um, it needs to be sent out of the cell, but before it can, it goes to the Golgi and it'll be all fixed up to be sent out by exocytosis. Now, the other thing about the Golgi is that 
it's also the area where the enzyme or the organelle called lysosomes are actually made from the Golgi. Now, I want to emphasize something right now. When we talk about eukaryotic cells having membrane bound organelles, you can see the folds in the rough and smooth ER, as well as those folds in the Golgi. Those folds are actually lipid bilayers, the same material that you find the cell membrane. <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, that the cell membrane is made out of, okay? All right, and then, ooh, let's talk about the mitochondria. The mitochondria is my probably my second favorite organelle. So when we look at the mitochondria, the mitochondria is a special organelle that has two membranes, it's a double membrane organelle, has that inner membrane with all those folds, and then it has an outer membrane. And the mitochondria is often called the powerhouse of the cell. I know that that term bothers a few science teachers, but uh, it's an easy way to remember it. And the mitochondria's job is to take glucose or other food molecules like fat or protein, but it prefers, um, it's gonna use some uh, glucose, it's gonna break down um, our food in the presence of oxygen, and it's going to release energy in the form of ATP. So in this little animation right here, when you saw the ATPs coming out, that is our cells energy. That is the type of energy our cells use. And it comes from the mitochondria or the majority of our ATP comes from our mitochondria. So as the mitochondria breaks down our food and releases energy, the waste products it makes are carbon dioxide and water. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about the lysosome. Now the lysosome um, can be referred to as like the garbage truck of the cell or the recycling center of the cell. So a lysosome has special enzymes on the inside that are going to hydrolyze or break down uh, larger molecules. So that larger molecule might be a damaged organelle like a mitochondria, but it also could be something that the cell engulfed and took in. So like our white blood cells, for example, will take in bacteria to like clean up our body, that's part of our immune system. A lysosome will actually fuse with that vesicle containing the bacteria and break down the bacteria and recycle those parts or recycle or send out of the cell. So the lysosome digests or breaks down um, damaged organelles or other particles within the cell. And then we have the chloroplast. Now the chloroplast is where photosynthesis occurs in plant cells. You'll notice these previous slides were all animal cells. So now a plant cell has all of these as well. A plant cell we can see here has a nucleus. It has a smooth and rough ER. It has a Golgi apparatus. It has mitochondria. It has lysosomes. It has ribosomes. So plant cells have all the same organelles as an animal, but they additionally have a chloroplast, and that chloroplast is going to do photosynthesis. The chloroplast will take carbon dioxide and water and using the power of the sun, convert that into glucose and other macromolecules. So the chloroplast's job is basically to make food for the plant, but also food for us when it really comes down to it. Um, the other difference between a plant cell and an animal cell is you can see that green cell wall around a plant cell for structure and support that is made of cellulose. Animal cells do not have cell walls, but plant cells do. And the other difference is the size of the vacuole. So in a plant cell, um, they have a very large uh, central vacuole and that stores a lot of water and wastes and ions for that cell. Now animal cells also have vacuoles, but they're much smaller. In plant cells, the vacuole can take up to 50% of the inside space um, of that cell, storing lots of water and ions and other molecules and wastes for that plant cell. So you can think of the vacuole maybe as like a refrigerator that stores things, food or molecules uh, for the plant, but also holds a lot of water. All right, so that is my overview on a eukaryotic cell um, organelles. So feel free to hit pause and quiz yourself on this um, uh, picture. There are a few things I did not talk about. Number 13 here are centrioles. Those are used in cell division. Um, and then number four and 10 and 12, you might be looking at those all could be like the only thing I talked about that looked like that was a lysosome. But there are also um, 
peroxisomes, which break down peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, and like 10 might be a vacuole, could be a vacuole. They could also be vesicles that transport or move things within a cell. So, all right, good job.